come to the showers of blessing service. And this service, the rain will fall. The rain of God's blessings that no one can deny will fall upon your life. In the name of Jesus. Now also, we are looking at a very important subject that people don't think is any longer important, but I'd like you to know Jesus is still coming. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So I'm happy this year is not in December because in December many of us travel. So we don't hear what God is saying about godliness. But it's time for us to retrace our steps because whether we know it or not, pastor and member, each one of us will give account. Amen. Amen. If you confuse people with your title on earth, you can't confuse anyone on judgment day. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. If I were you, I won't go to the restroom. <laughs> because you need to hear this one. Praise God. We look at the, a series of teachings captioned, Godliness empowers believers for all round breakthroughs. We just introduce this teaching today and then we go into the realm of blessings. Someone will have blessing upon blessing upon blessing upon blessing that will start speaking after today. In the name of Jesus. So godliness empowers believers for all round breakthroughs, part one. Please understand this morning that heaven is the homecoming of overcomers. Heaven is the homecoming of overcomers. No one ever gets to heaven having not overcome. Revelations, we see seven verses in that scripture. Revelations chapter 2, verse 7. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord said to the churches. And that includes... Winners Chapel, Maryland. To him that overcometh, mark it, will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. He that overcometh. The first instance. The second instance, verse 11. Revelation 2 and verse 11. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord said to the churches. Read that second part with me. One to go. <laughs> Shall not be hurt in the second death. He that overcometh. Verse 17, the third instance. Let's read together. One to go. <laughs> Let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord said to the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. I will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, save him. Verse 26 of Revelation 2. Are we there? Let's go one to go. He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give what? Power over the nations. Jump to chapter 3 of Revelation. Verse 5. One to go. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Jump to verse 12. Revelation 3, verse 12. One to go. He that overcometh, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down from heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. That's the sixth instance, or fifth instance. Now jump to verse 21. Revelation 3, verse 21. One to go. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I have overcome and sat down with my father in his throne. Chapter 21 of Revelations. Lekotolusazia. 
In the name of Jesus, everyone under the sound of my voice will make heaven. Amen. I didn't hear you loud, amen. amen. Now, verse 7, Revelation 21, verse 7. One to go, one to go, let's read, one to go. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God. What a reminder. Heaven is the homecoming of all overcomers in the kingdom. Please be cautious of the new doctrine around town. Even you won't let anybody live their life anyhow under your roof. Why do you now think God will allow you to live life anyhow? You can't blame anybody for false teaching on the last day. Because you too, you had your Bible. This is why there is a fierce battle even in the church. Against sin and over the life of every child of God. It's not everybody even in church you walk with because not everybody is going to heaven. Matthew 26, verse 41. Atosa Gorodos here. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. 1 Peter chapter 5, 8 and 9. 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9. Be sober, be vigilant. Because you adversary the devil. As a roaring lion walketh about. Listen, listen, listen. That's why when you find a walkabout believer, they will end up in sin. Because they, they characterize the same way the devil behaves. The devil is walking about. Why are you also walking about? It's in the Bible. He's walking about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith. So if you are not steadfast in the faith, you can't resist him. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Hebrews 12. Zozi gadado dodos. May I want to go to heaven? Oh. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> you can't stop me. You know, even in church, some people don't want. Somebody met one of our grandfathers in the faith. He said he knows he's going to hell, but his duty is to take him with him. He was a pastor talking to the general of us here. You now, you are a member. You take everybody is going. <laughs> Hebrews 12, Hebrews 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we are also a, a, a compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. And every sin that so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that he said before. Listen, you know one picture God showed me some years ago? Even if you don't want to run, the race is on. Just imagine. On your marks, set, ta. You say, I won't run. They are still counting you at the last. <laughs> Listen, just like the year started, January. Now, some of us are not where we were January. Some are still where they were. So they've been running. It's just that they decide to run on one spot. <laughs> verse 2, please. Hebrews 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, who for the joy that was set before him and the other cross, despising the shame, and now is set by the right hand of the throne of God. Verse 3, please. Verse 3, you have to be fast. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your mind. So it begins from the mind. Verse 4. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. We will make it. Yeah. You know, I've, told, I've mentioned in secret to my wife and in public, I don't want to pastor a church of people going to hell. It's not the size of the church. How many of us are going? To 
Today, the atrocity in churches are as bad as the world. If someone in the world tells you and lies, there's no big deal. But when you see somebody anointed, tongue speaking, but will lie a greater lie, then you know that there's a problem somewhere. The world and the church are now at par. Someone said, the world has become churchy. And the church has become worldly. In church today, all kinds of things that couldn't be talked about yesterday. But in the name of Jesus, you and I will overcome. Yeah. I can't hear the loudest amen. Yeah. Please understand that the battles we are fighting are not natural. They don't use chest to win these battles. They are spiritual. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Ephesians 6, verse 12. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4. But we must also understand that every temptation to commit sin is overcomable. And please let me also state, you are not the only one being tempted. Even me, I'm being tempted. It's not a sin to be tempted. It's a sin to fall for temptation. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. He said, they had no temptation taking you but such as is common to man. So stop celebrating your challenges. Amen. It may not be the same. Somebody may say, okay, their own challenge is financial. Others, their own challenge may be seen. But everybody has one challenge they are dealing with. Abraham overcame. Daniel overcame. Paul overcame, but they validated this fact. Daniel, for instance, proposed in his heart not to defile himself. Joseph, how can I do this wicked thing? So sin is wickedness, it's not pleasure. You should, when somebody's married, forget them, stop chasing them. It's wickedness. But as we discover in the life of Joseph, every overcomer reigns in life. Joseph said, I fear God. How can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Now in chapter 41 of Genesis 39 to 44, Pharaoh said, you will be over my house. Even you will rule me. According to your word, you will I be ruled. But it began with the fear of God. Please don't let sin become normal. The more you commit sin, the more insensitive you are to it. I'll tell you maybe in this church one funny story. Have you noticed if I preach, I hardly use examples. Have you noticed that I hardly use examples? That this, 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 this. God told me one day, he said, you better be careful. It's better you don't give example than lie. There are people when they are giving testimony and they are preaching, half of it is a lie. Half is a lie. So he said, just preach the word. The word is not a lie. Jesus said, be healed. And now you are healed. Not that I laid legs on you. And immediately I laid legs on you. I saw one spirit doing do 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 do. It's a lie. Have you noticed? Testimony speak. I don't have to testify your testimony. You testify it. God told me life. He said, don't join. He said, some people can do it without lying, but there are few. He said, instead of you coming back and saying, Lord, please forgive me. It's like I over-exaggerated that testimony. He said, better don't give it. <laughs> Anything I do, have you ever seen me say, as I was praying, goo 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 goo, everywhere, she, you, who? <laughs> have you seen that? And you find people doing that, there are no proofs to their ministry. May we not fall for temptation. Amen. What are the forces of ungodliness? 
He said, preach the word, be instant in season, not preach your examples. Now, let's look at two forces of ungodliness that we must overcome. Number one is unclean spirits. What do we call it? Unclean spirits. spirits. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. Matthew 10, 1. And when he called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against what? Unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now, I want you to join me. This one scripture is a very dear scripture to my heart. Zechariah 3, verse 1 to 5. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest. The day I saw this, I said, even pastors need to be careful. Standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is this not a brand plucked out of fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. Verse 4, please. We are going to verse 5. And he answered and spake that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass before thee. And I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. Somebody shout amen. Amen. And I said, let them set a fair matter upon his head. So they set a fair matter upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord did what? Stood. Unclean spirits make us do unclean things. Unclean thoughts, unclean words, unclean behaviors. This was a high priest. So you can imagine if pastors should watch out what of members. It's not talking of unclean spirit that is insanity, no. All those unclean words, unclean thoughts, they are the manifestations of unclean spirits. Because the fire in you cannot manifest in an unclean state. In the name of Jesus, everyone battling any form of unclean spirit, in this service, you are delivered. And usually they lead to the second force of ungodliness we must overcome. It is called the spirit of bondage. The spirit of bondage. It begins with uncleanliness and then it graduates to bondage. Romans 8.15 For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Romans 1.28 Let's look at that one too. Romans 1.28 And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. The spirit of bondage. Galatians 4 and verse 3. Galatians chapter 4, verse 3, please. Even so, when we were children, we're in bondage under the elements of the world. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Galatians 5, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where we Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 15. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 15. And he said, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Please hear this. It is possible for a man to be subject to bondage for his whole life if nothing is done about it. But I stand upon this altar of fire to declare, anyone under any spirit of bondage, I decree that you are loosed. 
I can hear a louder amen. amen. <laughs> Second Peter chapter 2, verse 19. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 19. He said, whilst they promised them liberty, they themselves are servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, the same is he brought in bondage. But I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, every habit that has become bondage, under this heavy unction of the Holy Ghost, I decree you are loose in the name of Jesus. This usually refers to addictions. Somebody in the first service testified, addicted to drug, was overdosed. In fact, he died. Thank God the people were able to resuscitate him. And he's climbed upon this altar, first service, to give his testimony. The spirit of bondage. There are people that are addicted to pornography, addicted to stealing, addicted to lying, addicted to fornication, all kinds of things. But in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, on this first day, first Sunday of the month, I decree every stronghold of addiction that has become bondage broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. I can't hear the loudest amen. amen. A stronger amen, please. Amen. Now, how do we overcome ungodliness? Number one, purpose to live a godly life. It begins with a hard desire. Please don't join people to say everyone is doing it. And Daniel proposed in his heart not to defile himself. It begins with a purpose, even though it doesn't end with a purpose, but it begins with a purpose. I don't like this behavior. Lord, help me. I want to stop parabolating. I want to stop lying. I want to stop stealing. I want to stop bringing down and destroying others. Lord, help me. He begins with a purpose. And he proposed in his heart. Not a purpose by discussion. In his heart. Lord, enough is enough. How long will I be in church and not be in touch? Daniel 6, 5. Daniel 6, 8. You know the story. We can't find any occasion against Daniel except we find it concerning the law of his God. That is, if you will have any problem with me, have a problem with me because I love God. Now, what does that mean? If you will claim I'm not a good friend, let me be a bad friend because I love God. Let me be a bad friend to you because I will not compromise. Let me be a bad friend to you because I will not join you to pull down others. I've never seen a man pull down others and go up. When you pull down others, you are, you are bringing them to your level, but you can't go up. And if you try to pull somebody down, the person refuses to go down, then you remain there. <laughs> now, let me quickly say, a purpose in your heart doesn't make you overcome it, but it's the beginning of you overcoming it. Until you decide it, then you can't be empowered for it. So it begins first with a decision. What is that decision? No matter who is doing this wrong, I won't join them. Hear this? I don't want to pastor a church going to hell. So I've decided to be different. You may not like honesty and sincerity, but I won't stop it. Because nobody's blood will be on my head. I won't make you come to church and laugh and shout, yeah, 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 and keep singing. In this church, it doesn't take you two, three services. You hear something that will hit you, boom! You say, that one is me. Who told this man? <laughs> because on the last day, I want God to say to me, well done, thou good and faithful servant. America didn't change you. Please be cautious in this part of the world where we are hearing you can live anyhow and go to heaven. On the last day, we'll find out. And please don't wait till the last day to find out. Even in your house, you won't let anybody under your roof live anyhow. Why do you think God Almighty will let you live anyhow and say, hey, stay coming? It's not like that. All the scriptures I'm reading are New Testament. So why did you get your own? Number two, to overcome ungodliness. 
Watch and pray. Watch and what? Did you notice he didn't say pray only? Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Make prayer your routine. Watch and pray. We've read that. He said, watch and pray that you fall not into temptation. Matthew 26, 41. Watch and pray. So if you don't watch and pray, you will fall. He didn't say pray only. He said, watch and pray. So as you are praying, be watching. There are some things you see, you don't need to speak in tongues, you run. <laughs> to flee means to run as in terror. You can't see someone trying to defy you and bring down your marriage. And you are praying in tongues. I hear ya. Yeko, kaka. That's not time to pray. He said, watch and pray. So when you see somebody trying to defy you, stand up and leave and be praying as you are going. <laughs> watch and pray. Now, please, in this kingdom, never pose to be a big man. Those who don't take the scripture wrong and swallow it all, fall into all kinds of temptations. It's not everything you pray. There are some people who come to see me in the office, I stand up. Stand up means I'm going. Where are you going? I'm going. <laughs> I don't cancel people with my door closed with all the anointing. Yet, you now close your door in a rainy season. <laughs> and you claim you are wise. <laughs> so as you are praying, keep one eye open. And watch. You see any appearance of evil, run. And be praying as you are running. You see life that, hey, you are about to be overcome by fornication. And now saying, I'm fasting and praying. Carry your things and leave. On the way, keep fasting and In this kingdom, anybody that is doing gym, gym, they usually fall. Because you are not following the scriptures. Abstain. Are you looking at that? First Thessalonians 5.22. From every appearance of evil. Don't wait to confirm that it's evil. Once it appears like it's evil, run. Number three. Continue to engage the cleansing power of the world. The world. Live in this book. Anything anybody tells you, check here first. It's not the size of your Bible. Generation has passed where it is the Bigness of your Bible that determines the bigness of your faith. If this thing is not in your heart. Pfft. So live in the world. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Any new generational truth that is not here, please be cautious. God has not changed. It's in your Bible. I am the Lord. I change it. No. So his standard has not changed. There's no new heaven. Do you notice that there's no heaven for America? Are you aware? Yes. All right. The same heaven for Sierra Leone. The same one for... So behavior. <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. I said praise God. Hallelujah. Number four, to overcome ungodliness. Engage in continuous fellowship with the saints. Please thank God for the time you spend alone with your family to pray. But it's important never to forsake the gathering together of the saints. Hebrews 10:25. There are some of us that were very strong. The moment we go out of fellowship, <clears throat> we become weak. Even a pastor too must have pastor. Me, I. I've had my own service today. Long. If I've been having service since Monday, it's not today. Anyone who is not taught will soon lead people astray for his own comfort. He said, no, 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 sin now because I'm also sinning. Please, if it's not in this Bible, no matter the suit, be cautious because God will not break his word for anyone. My prayer for each one of us is that if Jesus tarries, when the trumpet shall sound, none of us shall be missing. Yeah. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Say your amen if you believe in heaven. Amen. Let that amen be the loudest. Amen. Now what are some of the benefits of godliness? Three, and very quickly you know them, most of them. 
Number one is divine favor. Thou will bless the righteous. Some of the things many of us are spending heavy hours praying for are automatic for righteous people. Favor. Joseph didn't have to do Jim Jim, but he took over. He said, I fear God. I think that should become our language. Somebody approaches you, can you do this? I fear God. I told one of my daughters, I'm sure she will permit me to share this. Anyway, I don't even know her name, so I can't even call the name. She said, sir, one, two, three are the things I've done. I said, okay, number one, you know you are not living in truth. Go and reverse all those evil things. And part of it includes immigration. You can't lie and expect favor. She went, she did it, she came back, said, this thing is working. Including her job, they couldn't fire her. She told the boss, this is my status. The boss says, stay and walk. Amen. Don't join them all. Uh, <laughs> May I never do anything against God to get paper from man. Hear me. Most of you are saying, hey, you are full. <laughs> listen, God is watching you. He's watching. Marriage to get documents, stop that nonsense. I will tell you. Some of you may not know, years ago when I was in New York, eight years, nine years ago, we applied for my wife to come. She couldn't come. I wrote to the headquarters. I said, please transfer me. I can't be here without my wife. That's how I left New York. Is it the same today? Thank God I didn't stay then. Because you will have finished the unction of my life. But I went and it fired. And I'm back bigger. I'm back better. I'm back bigger. You must have a stand. Lord, if you won't do it, forget it. You say, okay, be talking like that. It's heaven, no? You, you can imagine that you are now about to sign something and just hear the trumpet. <laughs> it's not a, listen, let me tell you the truth. One thing I have, with, listen, listen, listen. I told God, Lord, when I finish any message, I want to hear well done. Some of the things I'm saying are difficult for men to say. And hear this. People like us have many enemies. You don't know? Okay. <laughs> But that's why God is on our side. Yes. If God be for us, who can be against? Carry your friendship and go. Let God be on my side. Let God be on my side. I told you by the time I'm living here, by God's grace, you will say that man, he pastored also. Even when anybody lies, you say, please stop it. We have had the reward. We have had the real world. Divine favor. That will bless the righteous. I've observed even in my personal life, when I separate my time, time with God to pray, to fast, to study, that's when favor is heaviest. Not prayer for favor. When you are saying, Lord, cleanse me, I want to please you. I want to please you. God will say, you want to please me, I will release my pleasures upon you. So divine favor. People who live a straightforward life don't pray long to be blessed. Number two is divine health. Now please hear this and don't misquote me. Some sicknesses are linked to our lifestyle. I didn't say all. I said some. Jesus told us that. He said, now, what has this man said? Now, go and sin no more. Let's say worse than this come. So it means this one came by sin. Not all, but some. So when you find out that you are challenging your health, before you start, oh, Lord, heal me. Ask, Lord, where am I getting it wrong in my lifestyle? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We will make heaven. 
I don't know about you, but what's the point being in church and then you join those who never went to church? What's, just ask, what's the point? In summer you come, in winter you come, then you still know now make heaven. What's the point? What's the point of this suit and tie? Just, no, 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 I'm serious. What's the point of being ordained and you have no place in heaven? I'm not, listen, no, there are people in church who are worse than people in the world. Yes. Worse. I didn't say they are the same. They are worse. But that doesn't mean all of us are going to hell. It's a choice. On the last day, everybody is on his own. Every, sir, everybody. Oh, sir, you can't be asking for anointing oil then. Everybody is on his own. You say, please, pastor, do you remember me? Oh, yes, I remember you. Meet me inside. <laughs> Everybody, please hear this. If this doesn't reach out to you, your blood can't be on my head. You too, you have the Bible. All the scriptures I quoted for those who say, Old Testament has passed. Are they not New Testament? He that doeth righteously is righteous. You can't be fornicating and stealing and we'll go to the same place. Assignment concluded. Rise on your feet. Lord, help me to live a life that pleases you. Hey, anybody wink your nose, there is the judgment day. And it's only those that are in Christ that will stand. Lord, I want to please. How many of you want to please him? I don't know about you, but I want to please him. We are not there yet. But it begins with a desire. Will you please raise your voice? Lord, help me to please you. Lift your voice and pray. Help me to please you. Maryland, you are not praying. Help me to, I want to live a life that pleases you. I don't want to live by public opinion. I don't want to live by the standards of this world. Help me to live a life that pleases you. Help me to live a life that pleases you. Help me to live a life that pleases you. Jesus, I don't want to miss it. Will somebody pray? Don't look around. This time for you to pray your heart out. Pray your heart. Pray your heart. I want to please you. I want to please you. Thank you, Father, for your help. In Jesus' mighty name. Even this day and age, you need to be careful who you call your mentor. I've seen things, so I can't share them with you. Because for some of you, it may even damage your small feet. When you see people who have had access to God before, and they just go like this, it's a painful experience. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows. Now, you can imagine me preaching this kind of message and sleeping with somebody. Just imagine. Don't you know it happens? Why are, you, are you in this world at all? It's not every pastor that I can put my head to lay. Lay on my head. No, I want to check you out first. All kinds of things go on in this world and people pretend like God is not watching. Like God is not watching. If they say, now you leave this place, you don't have documents. I won't even tell you. I will go. My anointing is too, my anointing is not just in this environment. Do you know that? Uh, if God has left this church, I want to leave first. Put an anointed man in a village, you will hear of him. Put an a non-anointed man in America, you won't hear, you won't hear nothing. In fact, the anointing will be annoyance. But this is the truth. Anything we are doing here is, I also check myself. 
God will ask me, did you do what you taught them to? How do you live your life? Not the one you are doing in church will be behind closed doors. Be cautious because one day we will all give account. My prayer is that it will be a glorious day for us. In Jesus' name. Everything we do in this church, we do with our whole heart. The next 15 minutes, I will bless you. I'm talking of raw blessing. I have received commandment to bless. And he has blessed. And I cannot reverse it. By this blessing coming upon you, the month of November for somebody here will be like 20 years put together. I'm speaking authoritatively to you. The month of November for somebody will be like 20 years put together. Now I decree in the authority of the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, that everyone on the line for breakthrough in any area of their lives, you are entering into your breakthrough realm today. In your spiritual life, you will break through. In your family, you will break through. In your finances, you will break through. Now you came with points of contact. This is time to bring them out. Points of contact for your miracle children. Points of contact for your career, your resumes. Whatever it is, we send out that message during the week. I'd like you to be hypersensitive. This is not one of those regular services. This is annual. It is once a year. This is the first time this year. This is the last time this year that we are having this service. Anything that represents the works of your hand. Somebody believing God for miracle marriage, you have it written down on that paper. When do you desire to be married? Someone believing God for miracle children, you have the dates you desire delivery. You have the names of those children. Whatever it is, someone else believing God for marital reunion. There has been separation in your family. Put down a date. He said, blessed is she that believeth. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told of the Lord. Now I therefore decree, starting with miracle children. And we have seen many in this church. 19 years broken. 15 years broken. 7 years broken. We saw somebody earlier on this year, seven miscarriages in seven years, and on the seventh year, she put to bed. Now hear this, in the authority of the name of Jesus, everyone believing God for miracle babies, I decree within the next nine months, we are standing here celebrating your children. Now for those who desire twins, because I've noticed in this church we've been having one one, now we are going to the realm of double. If that's what you desire, double, double. Now in the name of the Lord Jesus, everything medically wrong with your body, I decree right now supernaturally you are putting forth. Everyone that has waited and has given up in process of waiting for miracle children, I decree by this time next year, the whole world has already heard your testimony. Everyone in the line for marital settlement. You believe God to be married? Marriage is a good thing. Never pretend like you don't like it. Because if you don't like it, you can't have it. Therefore, I decree everyone believing God for marriage. I decree that by our anniversary celebration next year, May 1st and May 2nd, you will have already been gloriously married. I decree everyone desire marital restoration and you have put down the date that you desire this restoration to take place husband walked away wife walked away but you are saying I believe God and you've put down a date I decree before the end of this year that runaway husband runaway wife will run back home everyone in the line for gainful employment I think that brother said 12 years. Was it 12 years? 12 years. 12 years. Over 50 rejections. But suddenly everything turned around. Now here is everyone that is jobless. This month of November, you are gainfully employed. Now 
I stand on this altar of fire to declare even jobs you do not qualify for will be given to you. Jobs you do not qualify for will be given to you. Jobs you do not qualify for will be given to you. Everyone that desires career promotion, yes, you are working, but you know you are not where you ought to be. And there is room for double promotion. I hereby decree, whatever you should end this year at, even if it will take a double promotion, or it will take a triple promotion, whatever it will take, you will attain your lawful career high this year. Everyone that may be involved in consultancy services will provide one service or the other. And it seems to have suffered stagnation. Nobody calling you. Nobody offering you jobs to do. And it seems like you have been in a dry season. I stand upon this altar of fire to declare on this showers of blessing service that for many of you, before Wednesday, jobs you have never seen or you have never been called for all through the year, you will receive phone calls of those jobs. Now anyone that has any health issues, we've seen diverse healings. And I mean diverse healings. Not by anybody pushing another person, but by God coming down himself. Now I said, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. So the blessing of God is not just for physical prosperity, it's for prosperity in your body. I hereby decree, anyone under any form of sickness or disease, by this blessing upon your life, that sickness and disease expires. No matter how long it has been there for, I decree the authority of the name of Jesus an end has come to that sickness and disease. I command everybody under any plague of sickness and disease be healed in the name of Jesus. Now anyone that desires deliverance of any family member from any form of oppressions, I decree today is their day of deliverance. Everyone in our midst design academic success. We've seen many young people and elderly people share testimonies of success even with awards to show. And we saw one share a testimony, all A's. We've seen people to PhD level share their testimonies. I decree anyone under any form of academic stagnation, that stagnation is over in the name of Jesus. I said that stagnation is over in the name of Jesus. Everyone that desires immigration breakthrough. And I know how to watch God when in that season where the laws have been broken for the sake of his people. Every Sunday, including today, there's immigration testimony here. We couldn't just read it. Every, that's citizenship. We have left the level now of green card. So you need to come up to where God is. Every week, the past five, six weeks, every week, including today now, we'll read it maybe in second service, every week. Now, please hear this. Anyone stagnated in place of their immigration, I stand upon this altar as an oracle for this hour and I decree that that story is turned around. That story is turned around. Some will apply for green card and they will respond with citizenship. Some will not even apply. Listen, and we hear that testimony in this church. No application. Somebody says, has it happened? We are talking about God. We are not talking about a man. That is zero application. I stand to declare for all that believe God in the authority of the name of Jesus, every such immigration matters are settled now. Now there are individuals here that have received life threats. Not by a man coming to threaten your life. Maybe sickness. 
oppression, all kinds of things in the night. I stand upon this altar to decree. Whether the devil likes it or not, you will live out to fulfill the number of your days. We will not bury any underage person in this church. In the name of Jesus. Now hear this. Everyone who desires one kind of favor or the other, I decree that the God that has favored many of us in spite of all the odds will favor you. Favor beyond human comprehension will locate you in the name of Jesus. Whatever might be the issue of concern. Because the blessing of the Lord is the cure to concerns. I decree, whatever you came in with as an issue of concern, because I'm one under authority, I've received authority to bless. Therefore, I decree, anything that entered in here with you as a concern is turned around into a testimony. Jesus. Now hear this and listen very well. We are not at the same level as witch doctors. No. Anybody that tries to curse you, my God, the God of this great commission, the God of Oedeko, will curse them on your behalf. Everyone that blesses you from today is blessed in the name of Jesus. Everyone that causes you from this hour is cursed in the name of Jesus. Because this is a showers of blessing service, you are not supposed to live with one. Showers. 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 Now, I decree in the authority of the name of Jesus under this prophetic atmosphere and cloud of glory. I decree over everyone that truly believes God an end has come to your dry season. 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 Do you notice I just had God now? Today is exactly one month from the start of Shiloh. Shiloh is 3rd of December. Today is 3rd of November. And Shiloh is the beginning of a new year. Now, what does that mean? There are exactly four weeks for the dominion prophecy of this year to speak. I hereby decree anything left in that package that is yet to speak in your life within the next four weeks they will speak in your life. In the name of Jesus. I stand on this altar to decree. Each one of us will emerge as giants. Each one of us will emerge as giants. Each one of us will emerge as giants. In the name of Jesus. Shall it be? You will enter Shiloh rejoicing. You will enter Shiloh smiling. You will enter Shiloh jubilating. You will enter Shiloh celebrating. Someone this week, Psalm 126, when the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. It shall be fulfilled in your life. So shall it be. Lift up your point of contact and wave them in the air. Give God praise. You deserve the glory. I 